Yeah. Okay. Uh, does someone want to read? I'm going to have a quick snack. Yeah. And I'm also eating my dinner. Okay. I'll, I'll go ahead and read. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. So, okay. The, this article looks at what happens when I use some mix of form. Where, it, where does the data go? And how do we handle it when it gets there? We also look at some of the security concerns associated with sending form. Where does the data go? Here we will discuss what happens to the data when a form is submitted. Our client server architecture. The web is based on a very basic client server architecture that can be summarized as follows. A client, usually a web browser, sends a request to a server. Most of the time, a web server like Apache, uh, IIS, Tomcat, etc. using the HTTP protocol. The server answers the request using the same protocol. On the client side, an HTML form is nothing more than a convenient, user-friendly way to configure and configure an HTTP request to send data to us. This enables the user to provide information to be delivered in the HTTP. Okay. On the client side, defining how to send the data. The form element defines how the data will all of its attributes are designed to let you configure the request to be sent when a user hits the submit. The two most important attributes are action and method. The action attribute. This attribute defines where the data gets sent. Its value must be a valid URL. If this attribute isn't provided, the data will be sent to the URL of the page is containing. In this example, the data is sent to an absolute URL, http2.com. Here we use relative URL. The data is sent to a different URL on the server, somewhere else. When specified with no attributes as below, the form data is sent to the same page that the form is present. We did, uh, we did we try to create uh, another file when we when we created a form in the first try. Didn't mm -hmm. do anything. Many older pages use the following notion to indicate that the data should be sent to the same page that contains the form. This was required because until HTML5, the action attribute was required. This is no longer needed. No, it's possible to specify a URL that is the HTTPS secure HTTP protocol. When you do this, the data is encrypted along with the rest of the, even if the form itself is hosted on an insecure page access using HTTP. On the other hand, if the form is hosted on a secure page, but you specify an insecure HTTP URL with the action attribute. All browsers display a security warning to the user each time they try to send it because the data will not be encrypted. The method attribute. This attribute defines how data is sent. The HTTP protocol provides several ways to perform it. HTML form data can be transmitted via a number of different ones. The most common of which are the get method and the post method. To understand the difference between these two methods, let's step back and examine how HTTP. Each time we want to reach a resource on the, the browser sends a request to a UI. An HTTP request consists of two parts. A header that contains a set of global metadata about the browser's capabilities and a body that can contain information necessary for the server to process the specific request. <coughs> the get method. 
The get method is the method used by the browser to ask the server to send back a given resource. In the server, I want to get. This. In this case, the browser sends an empty body. Because the body is empty, if a form is sent using this method, the data sent to the server is appended to the URL. Consider the following. Okay. Form at Method uh, okay. Since the get method <laughs> has been used, you will see the URL say hi to more appear in the browser address when you submit the form. Okay. <laughs> the appended to the URL as a series of name value pairs. After the URL web address has ended, we include a question mark followed by the name value pair, each one separated by an ampersand. Mm, I see. In this, in this case, yeah, in this case, we are passing two pieces of data to the server. Say, which has a value of high, and two, which has the value of mom. The HTTP request looks like this. Uh, the post method. The post method is a little different. It's the method the browser uses to talk to the server when asking for a response that takes into account the data provided in the body of the HTTP. The server take a look at this data and send me back an appropriate result. If a form is Sent using this method, the data is appended to the body of the HTTP request. Let's look at an example. This is the same form we looked at in the get section above, but with the method attribute set to post. Okay. When the form is submitted using the post method, you get no data appended to the and the HTTP request looks like so, with the data included in the request body is. <clears throat> yeah. The content length header indicates the size of the body and the content type header indicates the type of sent to the server. We'll discuss this headers later on. Okay. Hmm. Viewing HTTP request. HTTP requests are never displayed to the user. If you want to see them, you need to use tools such as Firefox Network Monitor or the Chrome Developer Tools. As a result, your form data will be shown as follows in the Chrome Network tab after submitting the form. Uh, sorry, after submitting the form, press F12, select network, select all, Select foo.com in the name tab, select headers. You can then get the form data as shown in the image below. Yeah. The only thing displayed to the user is the URL called. As, as we mentioned above, with a get request the user will see the data in the url bar but with the post request they won't this can be very important for two reasons if you need to send a password or any other sensitive piece of data never use the get method or you risk displaying it to the url bar displaying it in the url bar which would be very insecure if you need to send a large amount of data the post method is preferred because some browsers limit the size of the URL. In addition, many servers limit the length of URLs they accept. On the server side, retrieving the data. Whichever HTTP method you chose, the server receives a string that will be passed in order to get the data as a list of key value. The way you access this list depends on the development platform you use and on any specific frameworks you may be using. The technology you use also determines how duplicate keys are handled. 
often the most recently received value of a given key is given for example raw php php offers some global objects to access the data assuming you have used the post method the following example just takes the data and displays it to the user of course what you do with the data is up to you you might display it store it in a database send it by email or process it some other way this example displays a page with the data we we see this in action in our example php example file huh. which contains the same example form as we saw before with the method of, of post and an action of php example dot mm. php when it is submitted it sends the form data to php example dot php which contains the php code seen in the above block when this code is executed the output of the browser is no this example won't work when you load it into a browser locally browsers cannot interpret php code so when the form is submitted the browser will just offer to download the php file for you to get this to work you need to run the example through a php server of some kind good options for local php testing are mmp and ampps example python this example shows how you use python to do the same thing display the submitted data on a web page this uses the flask framework for rendering the template handling the form data submission etc okay the two templates referenced in the above codes are as follows form.html the same form as we saw above in the post method section but with the action set to url underscore for hello this is a ginger to a template which is basically html but you can contain calls for the python code that is running the web server contained in curly braces url for is basically saying redirected to slash hello when the form is submitted greeting dot html this template just contains a line that renders the two bits of data passed when it is rendered this is done by the hello function seen above which runs when the hello url is navigated to note again this code would work if you just try to load it into a browser python works a bit differently to php to run this code locally you need to install python pip then install flask using pip install flask at this point you should be able to run the example using python then navigate to localhost 5000 in your in your browser other languages and framework there are many other server side technologies that you can use for form handling including perl java dot net ruby etc just pick the one you like best that said it's worth noting that it's very uncommon to use this technology technologies directly because this can be tricky in more it's more common to use one of the many nice frameworks that make handling forms easier such as django for express for node js laravel for php ruby on rails for ruby phoenix for elix it's worth noting that even using this frameworks working with forms isn't necessarily easy but it's much easier than trying to write all the functionality yourself from scratch and will save you a lot of This is the underscore of this article to teach you server side languages. A frame, a special case: sending files. <laughs> sending files with HTML forms a special case. Files are binary data, are considered as such. 
whereas all other data is text because https http is a text protocol there are special requirements for handling binary data the n type attribute this attribute lets you specify the value of the content type http header included in the request generated when the form is submitted this header is very important because it tells the server what kind of data is being sent by default its value is application x dash in human terms this means this form data that has been encoded into url parameter if you want to send files you need to take three extra step extra step set the method attribute to post because file content can't be put inside url param set the value of n type to multipart slash form data because the data will be split into multiple one for each file plus one for the text data included in the form body if text is also entered in the form include one or more file picker widgets to allow your users to select the file that will be uploaded for example <coughs> form with a post and type multipart form data mm -hmm. no some browsers support the multiple attribute of the entire element which allows more than one file to be chosen for uploading with only one include element how the server handles these files really depends on the technology used as mentioned previously using a framework will make your life warning many servers are configured with a size limit for the for files and http requests in order to prevent a view it's important to check this limit with the server administrator before sending a file okay common security concerns each time you send data to a server you need to consider security html forms are by far the most common attack vector places where attack can occur against servers the problems never come from the html form forms themselves they come from how this how the server hand depending on what you're doing there are some very well known security issues that you'll come up again xss and csr cross site scripting and cross site request forgery are common types of attacks that occur when you display data sent by a user back to the user or to another user xss lets attackers inject client side script into web pages viewed by other users a cross site scripting vulnerability may be used by attackers to bypass access control such as the same origin policy the effect of this attacks may range from a, a pretty nuisance from a pretty nuisance to a significant security csrf attacks are similar to xss attack in the in that they start the same way by injecting client side script into web pages but the target is different csrf attackers try to escalate privileges to those of a higher privilege view, such as a site site administrator to perform an action they shouldn't be able to do for example sending data to an untrusted user xss attacks exploit the trust of a user and exploits the trust a user has for a website while csrf attack exploit the trust a website has for its user to prevent these attacks you should always check the data a user sends to your server and if you need to display it try not to display html content as provided by the user instead you should process the user provided data so you don't display it verbatim 
Almost all frameworks on the market today implement a minimal filter that removes the HTML, script, frame, by frame and object elements from data sent by any. This helps to make. Request in the hope that the server will execute. Usually, when the application server tries to store data, send this is actually one of the main vector attacks against. The consequences can be terrible, ranging from data loss to attacks taking control of a whole website infrastructure by using privilege escalation. This is a very serious threat, and you should never store data sent by user without sanitization. For example, by using MySQL real escape string. HTTP header injection and email injection. These kinds of attacks can occur when your application HTTP headers or email based on the data input by user or on a form. These won't directly damage your server or affect your users, but, but they are an open door to deeper problems such as session hijacking or phishing attacks. These attacks are mostly silent and can turn your server into a zombie. Be paranoid. Never trust a user. So how do you fight these threats? This is a topic far beyond this guide. But there are a few rules to keep in mind. The most important rule is never ever trust your users, including yourself. Even a trusted user could have been hijacked. All data that comes to your server must be checked and sanitized always, no exception. Escape potentially dangerous characters. The specific characters you should be cautious with vary depending on the context in which the data is and the server platform you employ. But all server side languages have functions. Limit the incoming amount of data to allow only what's necessary. Sandbox uploaded files. Sandbox uploaded files, store them on a different server and allow access to the file only through a different subdomain or even better through a fully different domain name. You should avoid many slash most problems if you follow these three. But it's always a good idea to get a security review performed by a competent third party. Don't assume that you have seen all the possible problems. No, the website security article is Article of our server side learning topic discusses the above threats and potential solutions in more detail. Okay. okay. Uh, as you can, sending form data is easy, but securing an application can be tricky. Just remember that a front end developer is not the one who should define the security. Yes, as we'll see, it's possible to for perform client-side data validation, but the server can't trust this validation because it has no way of truly knowing what's what really happens on the client side. Wow, that was a lot taken. Yeah.